welcome to One to One, the show where I have an open and honest conversation with some of the biggest artists or the best artists in the scene that I feel like are destined for greatness. I'm Miles B. On today's show, we have Mr. Sam Never Ends, the master of melodies, <laughs> Patney's golden child, it's SME. Thanks for coming down, fam. Thank you for having me. Um, mm. First off, man, I'm going to go straight in and talk about Essence. Mm. Um, to me, that was one of the best. Um, projects from a, a UK artist in the last Thank two you years. Very much. Um, I feel like it was heavily slept on. Um, <laughs> for real, that's how I feel. <laughs> no, no, it's true. It's and true. Um, I just wanted you to talk to me a bit more about that, like the mindset behind the project. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just the whole feeling behind behind that. Um, I would say Essence came off of the back of like a lot of buzz, a lot of things going on. People saying, yo, do a tape, do a project, da 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 da. And then, you know what I just said? I was really listening to, um, I think it was Tory Lanez at that time. And he was literally doing what I loved as well. Like doing the street shit. Mm -hmm. And then doing the melodies and the R&B as well. Yep. So it made sense for me to do like a two-sided project. So it was like, I started with the um, trap side. Yep. And the uh, street, the hard thumping 808s. And then yep. I transitioned into a kind of R&B sing-along kind of um half of the tape yeah um it took about a year to make um with penthouse right. penthouse music big like them um j rocks and everyone in the team um yeah man we just literally it was just week by week for about a year in and out of studio sessions all night grinding trying to um just make it authentic and make sure that um it was nothing anyone had ever really like heard at the time yeah because at the time, everyone was everyone knew me for kind of my authenticity. Yeah. Like, the melodies and the R&B rap and then the uh, singing on the hook. No one was doing that at that time. Yeah, so kind of, That's what kind of got you your, your name, innit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, man. So, yeah, we worked on it. I, I would say it did um, slow me down in terms of consistency of put release and stuff. But I've obviously learned from that because you, you have to be releasing while you're making. Yeah. You have to be now in the industry that we're in now right. anyway yeah that's this microwave generation kind of thing exactly like everyone yeah. just wants music now otherwise you're kind of forgotten really yeah uh -huh. um at the time you kind of labeled your sound as, as truthful um, yeah is that i still, still do yeah is that still what you, you define yourself yeah. as yeah i would say when i'm doing more like the r b rap kind of stuff mm. that's the truthful stuff um For those yeah. that don't know, what would you how would you define truthful uh truthful is like um i would say like a mixture of elements just of my element like how would I explain it? I would say it's like the R&B mixed with the Jamaican side of me, the West Indies. Mm. Um, then you got the bashment, you got the reggae, you got the dancehall, right. but then also you got the trap stuff where, and then showing people like a rap, mm -hmm. and then on the hip hop, the UK rap kind of stuff. So it's all just a blend of everything. And just um, I made up the name Trillful, and yeah, yeah. So, I think it came from I made a song called Trillist. Yeah. So I think it slightly came from that, mm. and then it was yeah, yeah, truthful. I don't know. I don't even know how it came about, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So with that, like, who would you say inspired? But obviously, you said you listened to like Tory Lanez. Um, yeah. I guess I'm sure you've been compared to like Drake in terms of that. Yeah. The yeah, duality yeah. of of the two, um, rapping and singing in the past. Like, yeah. Um, would you call those ins inspirations, or would you? Oh, hundred percent. else that you would that you would put in that category as people that influenced influenced your sound? Like you said, obviously it's other people that were doing it, but no one was really doing it here in the in the UK at uh -huh. that time. So I think what really influenced me was Drake's take take care. I think that was the start of like me really loving that kind of music, and like wanting to do that kind of music as yeah. well because like. If, if you're a Drake fan, then you know that is that is probably his best album still yeah. today. And like, yeah, man, it's crazy. Like the hooks on there, mm -hmm. the melodies and the rap on the verses, it's crazy. It's actually crazy. But yeah, um, that made me want to do that type of music and work on my singing, work on melodies and stuff. Um, Tory Lanez probably came about probably later down the line, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. Yeah, um, who else was I listening to at that time? Um, I'm not sure. But it was definitely the Drake Take Care times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Um, so, like, looking back then, at yeah. that time, like, um, 
did you kind of already who did you kind of already know you wanted to make a project? Or did you go and show your like cool oh. or was it kind of like you was making songs and then, and that kind of that's what kind of came from it. You kinda of had a, a nice collection of songs that kind of showcased your what you could do and you was like, cool, I think I'm gonna make this a project or, or like, how did that, how did you get into that mind frame of yeah I'm gonna make I'm gonna make, make a project. project yeah. yeah, I think um it was um, new management, I think it was. It was, um, I just got new management, big up flakes in the building. Um, he came in and it was like, I didn't have songs. I literally didn't have songs. Right. I was literally, I didn't have a studio, I didn't have nothing. All I had was two songs that just blew up mm -hmm. and it was like, yo, like, where's the material? Like, what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? Um, I literally, we just made the decision that we needed a project and it was like, all right, cool, we're working with Penthouse. Cool, how can we, how can we move away from singles in, and then transition into a sick body of work? Right. That's all it was. And then, um, yeah, so it was literally like, yo, you can't, you're, you're not gonna, at the time, no, do you know what it is? At the, nowadays, mm -hmm. you can do singles and singles and singles and just keep going. Yep. But at the time when it was, when I got established or they started to know my name, yeah. it was like, it wasn't a single game. It was kind of more projects and, and you had to have a good body of work. I was yeah. seeing people like Little Sims throw out, out not albums, but um, mixtapes and yeah. people was going crazy for it. And I was just thinking, yeah, I need to do that. Mm. So I think it was, the answer is, I think it was the lack of music I had or the, yeah. It's funny you say that. Yeah. Um, that Chip is one of my favorite artists, mm -hmm. and I always one thing he's he's said in interviews a few times that always kind of resonated with me mm -hmm. is that he's always said that every artist needs a body of work to represent them. Yeah. Like, and I think Essence definitely represents represents 100%. you. hundred you know percent. I mean, and mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like I, I I completely understand where you're coming from when you when you say that like, he just wanted something that just represented you and showed. Like, I'm mm -hmm. SME, like, you don't know who I am. Here's my, here's my work, like, yeah, 100%. Yeah, as, as a fan of music, I like listening to to albums and projects rather than singles. Than I mean, singles. I watch the singles on, on YouTube or whatever, or listen mm. to them. Mm -hmm. But if I'm like traveling from A to B or wherever, I, wherever I consume my music, it's definitely a, I don't want to play it. Yeah. Like, put it on, press play, and just let it, let Go it run. Go through the so, journey. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think it was, um, to be honest, from when I was like, let's say about 15, 14, 15, I've always said I wanted a mixtape out. Mm -hmm. My mixtape was coming out, my mixtape's coming out. From when I started even mm -hmm. just rhyming, yeah. I was saying, yeah, mixtape out soon, da 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 da. And yeah, the normal rapper, mixtape out soon kind of phrase. But um, yeah, I, find, I put out an EP just before um, Tell Me came out and stuff like that. But what was that I think that it was called IOU. IOU. And I think that's what made me transition, transition into that um, Tell me kind of sound and then that R and B, so because I started developing on my melodies, singing, I started singing more because I literally came from a grime group. Okay, I was gonna say what you were doing before grime. Yeah, grime. So and it was literally there was five of us in the group, so it's like you just do your verse and it's done. Like I mean, <laughs> obviously you have to have a good hook. Yeah. So it was like I had to transition transition into a um, artist basically, and that was what I found difficult. But we got there in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess. <laughs> You listen to take care as an inspiration yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Like the transitions are like one of the key points in that. So I guess when you're trying to make your own project, like having them transitions between tracks must have been yeah. important, important for you as Very well. Very important. And that's something I feel like a lot of artists don't really. Um, those it's those finer details that a lot of artists don't really pay attention to. Mm -hmm. um, whereas that's something I really noticed in in, in your work. Do you know what Thank I mean? you. So, um, yeah, definitely. Man, I, I hear that. Um, do you have a favorite track? Chapola was. Um my favourite, but I would say Me, You, You was um, definitely second favourite because it yeah. was just like a fun track to make and fun track to just mm. let out there because, um, yeah, it was just that. We were just vibing in the studio, man, yeah, and yeah. it was like Me, You, You, You yeah, and Me yeah, yeah. Too. It was like, crazy. One of my favourites. When I go to, if, I don't, if I'm not playing the whole, the whole project, mm -hmm. that's probably the one that, that's my go-to track. I haven't heard that. The worst thing is I haven't heard that in so long. <laughs> I'm going to listen to that today, actually. Yeah, yeah. And then on the R&B side, I would definitely say, because like, Tiana Major was out before the tape, mm -hmm. I would say Come Again. Okay. Come Again. Come Again. But yeah. then again, I really loved, um, it, what was that one? <laughs> What's it called, though? <laughs> What's it called? Um, 
my coonies. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I think the coolie skit, the coolie oh, skit yeah, yeah, was yeah. very fun to make as well. On the, um, I think it was the Sharon Stone sample. Okay. Yeah. Even though you're using these samples in your music, mm -hmm. like, if you didn't recognize yeah. the samples, you'd, you like, you're, even, you're so yeah. at home. You're so at home with these samples, mm -hmm. and it's like make it my own. Yeah, for real. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like a lot of artists now, obviously, like I'm sure you've seen like artists using like whole hooks of songs and. And then, yeah. saying, and then trying to say it's their own song, whereas you, you might use a little sample. Yeah, but, but you're not really. Your, yeah, like yeah. I say, if, you don't, if you're not a fan of, of that genre of music and you don't know the sample, you would think it's your own. Yeah. Is that, is that like a conscious just, decision? Or you, like, I feel like for me, as, a, as like someone looking in, mm. I get the impression that you just love R&B, like, mm. like you're a student of, of it, like you love yeah. it. No, I love it. I just quite like, like, quite like, like it. incorporate it mm. with, within, your, within your, your sound, like naturally, it's a natural thing rather than searching for, okay, how can I, how can I do this, do you know what I mean? Is, mm. that, is that how it kind of was? Or? Yeah, because when the, the rhythms on or whatever um, sample it is, mm. or they've uh, pen out a sample the song, I was just literally, I never thought about the, the actual song, mm. never ever. Like, I would literally just do my own thing on it. You know what I'm saying? That Sharon Stone sample, I was talking about coolies, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my favorite women, like, right. it was crazy, yeah. So, yeah, never ever think about. I think, well, I think nowadays, if I sample the song, I'll think about the song. Mm. Because I know that um, listeners like, um, if there's something sampled, you want to have a touch of that actual original, right. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But before, no. Definitely not. But yeah, I'm a student of R&B, definitely. <laughs> I want to take you around the city, but it's boring. I want to take you to the crib where it all is. Hey, I want to be the one you call when you're falling. <laughs> yeah, plus I'm trying to be your first thoughts in the morning. Mm. Second thoughts, I really want to hear it in the morning. I don't feel you getting drawn out, I just keep working on my drawing. Until you get drawn and it's funny because I hear you when you're calling. And I feel I'm going to pick up now. If you want to smoke, we can pick up now. So hold up where you hit her now. And invite this young hit around, I gotta call you like up. Memories down. and melodies, and I know what you're vigoring. Yeah, you got me singing like I'm jagged edge. So baby, pour that in. So what did the tape do for you? Like, did it, did it, did it kind of open new doors for you, or, or was it, did it just like get out? That was that, and, and kept yeah. it moving on to the next thing. Or did that? Did you get like a good response? Did it yeah. kind of open the people like, oh yeah, I really enjoyed the tape. Mm -hmm. Like higher ups or, or peers of the, in the scene. Was in response. all honesty, I wasn't happy with the response. Okay. No, no, no. I was happy with the response, mm -hmm. but I wanted it to hit the masses, okay. and that's what disheartened me. Mm -hmm. I was thinking this is gonna do craziness yeah, and, yeah. but what I didn't realise is that R&B there's no market at the time I didn't really realise because Tiana Major was doing so well mm -hmm. and stuff like that I didn't actually clock on that R&B doesn't have a market in yeah. England in the UK so when it actually came out it was like yo everyone's saying yeah this is sick but why isn't it hitting the masses like why isn't it going crazy mm -hmm. like you lot all loved Tiana Major you lot love Come Again why isn't it hitting the masses right, you know yeah. what I'm saying so that's what disheartened me, but at the same time, on the flip side, it absolutely, like, my headline show was absolutely crazy, right. like, like, then I realised when I'm doing every song, everyone's singing the lyrics to every song, mm -hmm. and I was like, that's when I realised what the tape did, and that was, we released it in August, and my headline show was in November, right. so that's when I realised, all the way in November, what it actually did, mm -hmm. and then it made me realise, okay, S, you're... You're a serious artist. Yeah, like, yeah. you're a serious artist, you can act, you're doing your thing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Even though we didn't get the reception, I realised that if we say I blow tomorrow or say I go glow viral tomorrow mm -hmm. and they look back at what I've done, then they'll know, like, yo, this guy's been doing yeah, it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I feel like, again, like, from, from someone that's not an artist, like, mm -hmm. it's almost kind of like the, the journey, do you know what I mean? Like, yes, you look at yes, your yes. IOU project mm -hmm. and what that response that got mm -hmm. and you look at the response that Essence got I'm yeah. sure if you compare the two mm -hmm. Essence probably got a way more better maybe not yeah. what you wanted but it got a way yeah. bigger response to, to then what you uh, yeah it got bigger but I don't know if better I don't know I don't know yeah, yeah, yeah. because IOU was like oh S you're becoming an artist this is crazy mm -hmm. and then um, Essence was like yeah you're a sick artist like you know what I'm saying yeah 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 it's crazy crazy one mm -hmm. um but I feel like if you look at someone like J. Cole, yeah. he's always kind of had that, like, obviously completely different artist to you, but he's got, always kind of had his core fan base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you had your show, mm -hmm. um, 
that would, I guess was the start of your core family is when you mm-hmm. had like everyone singing every single lyric crazy feeling song. yeah <laughs> yeah he's crazy speak like that how was, how was that like um, coming out on stage and, and, and seeing that crazy I was so nervous so like for the whole day before. you've done mm-hmm. shows before in it, so yeah 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 it's like to have your own show where, you're, where everyone's there for you not supporting no one no like, one I had support acts you know what I'm saying yeah. it was mad <laughs> like um that feeling there when I just walked on the stage, it was just like everything I ever dreamt of. Like it was birthdays, it was packed. So you're seeing everyone in front of you and it was mad. And then everyone singing the lyrics. It's like, whoa, like, whoa, I just want this feeling forever. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we just pray for more moments like that. <laughs> <laughs> Would you prefer, do you prefer like being in the studio, like in the studio, right? Or would you like being on the sh- on stage and like the shows and that? Oh. What would you prefer? you can only choose because I'm yeah I definitely music. love performing more yeah. yeah I definitely love studios kind of like like the calm before the storm I right, guess right, right. when I'm on stage it's like yeah this is where I want to be mm-hmm. this is where I've, you know what I'm saying just want to sing rap whatever just show everything that I've got you know what I'm saying and just show the catalogue and have epic drops my mm-hmm. DJ doing crazy things while I'm performing yeah, yeah, yeah all yeah, of that yeah. you don't get that in the studio do you know what I'm saying you're, you're actually just sitting making a song, but yeah. What about videos? Like, um, mm. do, do you like do you like um, the process of shooting the videos? Or do you prefer when you see, just see the final cut and you see all your ideas come to, come together? Nah, I don't like shooting. You I like don't like shooting. shooting like, it's just <laughs> long. It's just long. I hate the fifty takes. I hate yeah, the, yeah. doing the lyrics all again. I hate. I hate all of that. I'm one of those. I'm lazy. I can't lie. I'm lazy. I just <laughs> want things done like that. But I know it takes time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like shoots. Alright man, so moving on a little mm. slightly, like, you didn't know Mad About Bars freestyle. Mad About Bars, Last yeah. year. The most underrated freestyle ever. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'll give you that, I'll give mm. you that. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously there was a couple, couple little lines in there, yeah, yeah, people yeah. were interpreting as, as, as shots in it. I just wanted to ask yeah. you just quickly about that, like, would uh-huh. you say you were taking taking shots at anyone or that? Like, I think it was just, literally just not taking like, shots, more about returning <laughs> yeah. definitely returning because yeah a lot of things were happening at that point mm. um i was going not even like even me as a human like i was angry you know what i'm saying a lot of things were happening and you're like what like why is that happening mm-hmm. and then things are people are saying things not bad things but like people are saying things and you're thinking well oh, all right if you're gonna say that i'm gonna say this you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying so and i didn't really know better because i'm very competitive yeah, yeah, yeah. very like I've even spoken to these people who are speaking of, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I've said, whoa, bro, I'm competitive. Like, if you're going to do that, I'm going to do that back. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I guess, like, behind the scenes, it was like, mm. I guess you, you said you had, a, you had the conversation. But, yeah. But from a, a fan's perspective, it's like, bro, like... Yeah, 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 I can from, imagine. Like... <laughs> I can imagine because people hit me up. Mm. Like, raw. They're like, yo, you need to do. You need to actually make a statement because what they, what these people have done, it's like, raw. Yes, you need to yeah, 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 hit yeah. them up and actually ask them or, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. get back at them. You know what I'm saying? But it weren't no like animosity or anything. So it's but it's like definitely sport, like, like the... sport. Yeah, definitely sport. Yeah. Kind of like how people talk about hip hop and style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. That's that's. Yeah, man. Mad about buzz, but then I'll, once again I'll say I think. It's the most underrated because of the controversy. Right. Like if I don't know because I was doing a lot of things in there. I was speaking German. I was mm-hmm. doing. Yeah, like, you yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> that that's one thing I'll actually look back and say, wow, like, how did that blow up? Like yeah, that's yeah, yeah. crazy. Well, how did you even do that? Why did you even talk German in, in that? Like... I don't know. Like <laughs> we was just once again having fun at penthouse and mm. just, and then I used to say this reflection in. Um, in my school, we was like, I think my school was like the first ever academy. Okay. And we had to say the reflection before every class. Mm-hmm. And in German, that's right. what you had to say. Okay. You know I'm saying, but I obviously related it to the music. So, yeah, pick up my German listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, go watch that, that man about Mars, seriously. Yeah, yeah for <laughs> um, so, up, so you're obviously from Hackney, Hackney's Golden Child. Yeah. Um, what was, what was that like growing up in Hackney? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, what, what was, yeah. was it just like, I guess, normal, like, London life or London living? I don't, was know, it? don't know about any other place, <laughs> but I know that Hackney was a bit crazy, though. Mm. It was just, 
it wasn't like how it is now where everyone's just dying. Mm. But it was like when you're growing up and you're hearing, oh, this person got stabbed, that person got stabbed. It's crazy when you were in it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's, I'm actually quite lucky to have like really good people around me that actually kept me away from that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you can easily get drawn in no mm. matter what, who, whoever you are. Do you yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? If you're the geek, if you're the bad boy, like right. you can get drawn in mm -hmm. somehow. But um, no, Hattie was crazy. Still, uh, uh, fun though, very fun. Uh, and it was almost like you like you love the risk, like like you know that there's madness going on, yeah. but you still go, like right. you still go to that party, mm -hmm. you still go to that block party in the summer when you know that that gang's got that beef you know what i'm saying yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah um yeah it was a risk but you kind of lived for it man mm. and that's why i can't even sometimes i look at the youths now and i think i can't even like get onto them because when i was young i was doing the same thing yeah like not literally killing people that's right. crazy but i was literally out here living for the fraud you know what i'm saying and um, but yeah hackney was crazy man but i guess like mm. i mean music kept me yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, and music and football get get me. Um, yeah. Obviously, we're talking about air. You, like, you received love from like um, like the legends, like of yeah. Hattie, like you know the Mars, Asko, etc. Yeah, tricky. Tricky, exactly. Uh, yeah. Of course. Um, with so, I guess yourself now, I guess you could you could be considered in that category for the the, the new artists coming. Yeah, up, yeah. Hopefully, the yeah. Coming through now. Um, and you've been very so very vocal on social media about about all the stuff going on in Hackney. Like, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What, what, what do you, to speak on that, like, what do you, how do you feel about that? Like, oh, like, I guess, like you were saying, that like, you kind of lived through, maybe not, maybe not as mad, maybe just as mad, but you yeah. lived through, through I've seen rough it, yeah. times as well. You've seen stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, would you, would you, and you come through the other side and chosen a different path? Mm -hmm. um, what, would you, what would you say to to these guys that are doing stuff? Not all these guys that may be tempted to roll with knives or do madness, do madness on the road and stuff like that. Like, as someone who's kind of, like you said, have seen it and decided to not, not do that. But, um, I'm sure you've got people, you've got friends yeah. and stuff that have chosen that part. Like, yeah, it's mad still. Yeah. I would say, um, because I'm a youth worker as well, mm -hmm. you have to remember I'm a youth worker as well. But one thing I will say is, I can't advise anyone because they won't listen anyway. Right. Like, that's the people that are in it. Right. Um, and what I would say is that if you are not in a gang or whatever, make it, make sure you know what you're, how do I say it? Like. If you're not in a gang, don't roll with a knife. Like, like, leave it to them. Leave it to them. Don't feel like you have to do that because you never know what might happen. Right. Like, like, believe in God, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. God's real. God will help you along, you know what I'm saying? Because I've literally seen people now that are not in gangs now, but they feel like outside is such a risk yeah, yeah, yeah. that they've got to roll with their thing or pick up a kitchen knife before mm -hmm. they go outside, you know what I'm saying? Because they might be going to an area where boom, boom, boom. Right. You know what I'm saying? But um, I don't know, for the young, well, right now in the youth clubs, we're working on intervention and like, we can't really do nothing about the people that are in the gang wars right now, but right. we can stop the people, stop the young oh, ones that are about to right. get into secondary school, about to see all of these things, mm -hmm. get exposed to all of these things, especially with um, like literally from of what I've been noticing over like last year, from, from your like in year six to year seven, you're seeing already the drill music or you're seeing already the gang wars. Mm -hmm. And it's like, whoa, but, it, but because it's in music now, it's become fun and it's become mm -hmm. like entertainment. Mm -hmm. But they're not realizing that that entertainment is actually real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So now that everyone's dropping dead, everyone's starting to say, oh my God, everyone's dying. Mm -hmm. But they're getting exposed to it, you know what I'm saying? Oh, when we were young, they were yeah. saying that about grime, innit? They were saying yeah, grime hundred percent. Oh. But grime wasn't really um, violent. Right, yeah, I wouldn't yeah, say yeah. grime was violent. It was hype. But it was being like, mm. but that's the same thing that getting put on drill was being attributed to to grime. They were getting yeah. that label, oh, people, these kids listen to grime. That's why they're giving me. Yeah, yeah, they tried. Like they did yeah. try it, but I personally believe it wasn't definitely. I don't think it was the grime side. If anything, I think if there was anything to do with violence it was the UK rap side. Right. If you could, no, it wasn't them, but if you could like say it was a genre, right, 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 I right. think the UK rap side was a bit more vulgar and like, mm -hmm. 
yeah, a bit more violent. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel like with the drill, like, so like you say, that the people are seeing drill, they're, they're rating it. Like, yeah. Do you think that they're jumping on drill, but then because maybe they're getting hype or, or mm-hmm. they're, do you know what I mean? They're, they're doing well with drill. They're like, oh shit, now I've got to kind of live what I'm rapping about. Like, yeah. Hey, fam, I've seen it. Like, literally, I've seen the things I've seen. I've literally seen a man love drill music and love rapping mm. and does drill me and does drill music only because he loves the sound right. but the next week i've seen him get absolutely almost killed mm-hmm. because he's made a song like that but he's only done it because he doesn't even have beef with right. people but because he's done that it's mad mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying people now see you as a target people now see you as oh you have ops I'm you have social ops. media as well there you go like, you know what i'm saying it's mad yeah, like oh, I don't ever want to say drill music's like the problem, but just know what you're doing. If you're in it, if you're going to go in it, you know what you're actually in it for. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you've got to make that decision 100%. Like, oh, it's mad. It is mad yeah. still. It's mad. But I, then again, I won't say I don't like drill music because there's some songs that are bangers. Right. There's some songs that are bangers. Like, Heady, like, he's mm-hmm. absolutely smashing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Lowski's smashing it. So it's mad. Yeah, it's mad still. Obviously, I'm taking it back to back to you. Yeah. Um, your your latest stuff that you've been releasing the last mm. maybe six months. Yeah. Like six to eight months was is very much more like a more tropical vibe. So yeah, yeah, yeah. From essence, which is more R and B trap. Mm-hmm. This is more like tropical Caribbean, like back to your roots, I guess. Like, yeah. Um. What 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 made that change? What made you want to decide to move in that direction for this like this new era of of, of the? Career? I feel like. I feel like noticing that and learning that R&B didn't have a market, had a big part to play. But at the same time, I feel like people around me, um, at the time it was like the the Young Banes, the Cold Joes, like people around me that, they rated me mm-hmm. just, like they rated me just before they blew. You know what I'm saying? And I was thinking, and then they would release a song and then I'm thinking, well, I can do that as well though. Yeah. So like, should I should I adapt to that or should I stick to this R and B route? Like so, I was just thinking, let me try it. Let me try something else. Let me actually try something else because I've never ever tried my Jamaican side, mm. my um, West Indian side. So I said, you know what? Like, let's give it a go. Like, I know you can do it. I'm not like I'm versatile. Yeah, I know I can do it. It's just about how well I can do it. So and yeah, we're we're building, man. We're building. See, that's the thing with you. Like for me. Like, I've, I've told you that like, I'm, I'm a fan, in it. Like, mm-hmm. I've interviewed a lot of people, um, but you're one person that I'm actually like, a fan of, innit? And it's Thank literally you. for that <laughs> reason, like, if, if, if someone only heard you rap, yeah. you think, oh, this guy's a rapper because your raps are, are sick, innit? Yeah. Like, um, the way I play, like, the, the, how, the thought, you can see the thought behind, behind mm-hmm. the bars, innit? But if someone only heard you, heard you sing, yeah. they're like, oh, hey, this guy's melodies are hard, like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, if you only had one or the other, you'd think that's what you do, but the fact that yeah. you do both to such a high standard, yeah. it's, it's, it's just about the balance, really. Right, and yeah. do you find that hard to, 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 um, to strike that balance? Yeah, 100%, yeah. I find that hard because, literally, and uh, this is all through, like, the last year or so, mm-hmm. it's like, one set of people want, are saying, yo, oh, I'm gonna be rap, that's all I want you to do, da 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 then other people are like, yo, bro, I love this Jamaican thing. I love it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. keep going on that wave. Then the next person will say, um, bro, I need you um, rapping on trap beats. Like, you're, like when you did Trapola Fortello, mad. Like, that's what we need from you. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then you have the, let's say, the labels, and they're like, yo, his market is the women. He needs to do, he needs to sing, he needs to da 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 da. You know, different people that want different it's, things from It's you. mad. Like, <laughs> and so, what I've just decided is that I just need to keep dipping in and out of pots, like, and just stirring the pot, mm-hmm. then go to another pot, stir that, and then, yeah, man, and be seasonal with it. Because right. in the winter, do your rap songs, do that. When it comes just before summer, you better have that summer bang already. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, that's what I've learned along the way. I'm happy I haven't blown up crazy crazily overnight because mm-hmm. I'll be absolutely baffed on what to do yeah, because yeah, yeah. I'm saying I'll probably be doing one thing in one lane right now mm. so I'm happy I've learned that and it's a stepping stone right now but yeah definitely gonna dip in and out of pots in terms of the balance Just keep
keep running and running Stop the running, baby Yo, No, you're getting bored Dealing with him Girl, you just keep running and running Stop running Stop the running Moving forward, are you, are you gearing up towards like a project? Are you, um, or is it just like, like you say, just the summer uh, singles for now and just seeing where, where it takes you? Yeah, I would say I've definitely got a strategy. Um, last year was definitely trial and error, but um, and see what people like and if people like the new kind of sound. Mm -hmm. But R now, do they? Do they? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like jungle. Said about R and B, not really audience, but just mm. new, new wave on. Like, yeah, yeah, they like, like it. They like it. Like jungle was like it was a proper radio friendly hit. Like mm -hmm. they really, really love that one still, and I still get people hitting me up saying, "Yo, why did push jungle more? Like, like yeah, I need yeah, to hear yeah. more for like jungle." And the video was was dope as yeah, well. Thank like, you, big like, up Brian, yeah, yeah, yeah. manager. He shot that one. Um, and then I did something called Like That with Shaki Dredd and mm -hmm. a couple other people yeah. and it was like, they were like, whoa, you're actually taking it there, do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's been really good. Um, so I'm going to wave through that um, through summer. But I think I'm going to, um, just before summer ends, I'm going to turn it back into, I'm going to go back to rap and actually like want, I want to kill winter. I want to kill winter mm -hmm. with the rap as well. Um, I've got my brand hopefully coming through. Um, it's called Remember November. Okay. And um, yeah, we'll see more about that. I don't know when, but I'm working on it right now as we speak. Yeah, um, yeah Remember November. And that's also going to be the name of the EP in November as well. Okay. I'm aiming for November and I want my, my next headline again in November. Mm. So yeah, I've got special, the special kind of yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying yeah. So I've got the it's my birthday month as well. Okay. So so I got the structure. It's just about literally execution, executing it and just making sure the finer details are done properly. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm I'm slightly a perfectionist, <laughs> and I hate when things are done like maybe like three quarters the way that right. I'm not done that last quarter. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you mentioned about radio play for these, these new tracks. Like, uh -huh. What, what's that like? What's that feeling like having your song on the radio? Like, oh, that's crazy! Yeah. Like, just the other day, um, I think it was—was was it Jungle? No, it was Run Punch before that. When I first heard myself on Capo Extra, right. like if, I've been on everything, all of the local radios, all of B BBC One Extra. But I think Capo Extra was the really, really, really sick feeling, like yeah. because it was very hard to get on Capo Extra before. Okay. And now, obviously, um, since Choice FM is really. Um, They've been empowering more, you know, black music, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, Capital Extra was a really sick feeling. Well, any radio is a sick feeling, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Capital Extra was mad still. Yeah, that you couldn't get on it before. Yeah, to get on it. and also it was first played by um, Ras Kwame. Oh. And Ras Kwame, when I was growing up, it was someone I just could never get in contact with. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So all the feeling was just mad. Like, he's playing my song. And he was the one that no, he he didn't ignore me on purpose, but right. at the time I wasn't really mm -hmm. anyone. So, so it yeah, it was, you the progression that you made. And exactly, that, yeah, it was just a that. sick feeling, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now yeah, we get. We, I still want to. I want to get on the power play, man, and just be on it every minute. But we soon get there. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I've got a couple more questions. This one's a bit more random. Um, uh -huh. If you could pick one song of yours mm -hmm. for someone that's never heard your music before, yeah. what song would you pick and why? Definitely, always, no matter what, Tiana Major. Yeah, what? Yeah. It's just got that um, that charismatic rap, that um, intricate rap, but then on the hook, it's very like, like I say, I'm like I'm singing like I'm Jagged Edge, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's the mixture of the two and the, just the blend, the and, and plus they all are to Tiana Major. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's exciting, it's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Did she ever you, by the way? Yeah! Yeah, yeah, I've known yeah. Tiana from oh, young. Yeah, yeah. I've known Tiana from young. Okay, she loved okay. it at the start. I think she, I think it's too much for her now. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, but big up her. So, um, and finally, if you could pick one artist that's alive, one artist that's dead that you dream collaboration, who would, who would you pick? Dead, I would say uh, MJ. No matter what, hundred percent. There's no one ever gonna be on top of that. And in the US, alive would be Kendrick Lamar because you know he's probably the best rapper alive mm. i would say in my eyes and just to see what he does in the studio like i would love to be in that situation and just see how he makes up his like even the little noises the little <laughs> ad-libs yeah, like, it's yeah, crazy yeah. just to actually understand what's going on in the studio how he makes his bodies work mm -hmm. it's crazy 
in the UK, I would say people like Ed Sheeran. Um, I would say um, someone close to me, like Ray Black. She's very close, but very far at the same yeah, time. Yeah. You know, I say she's gone right now. She's doing her thing. Mm. Um, I, I've always wanted that. I've always wanted to just collab with Little Sims, no matter uh, like one day, dope, like so. one day. I don't know what it sounds like, but it would be dope. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I don't even know what I would do. I don't even know if I would sing or rap, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But um, she knows nice, She nice knows one day. I told her one day I'm going to hit her up and just, when I'm in the right position, I'm going to hit her up and say, yo, it's time. You know mm. what I'm saying? Um, yeah, um, yeah, that's it, really. There's a few more people, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, SNE, mm. thank you for coming down. It's one Thank to you one. for having me. Thank you for having me.